What's going on friends, fellow hopheads? My name is Andrew. Welcome to the very next episode of Drewski's Brewskies. Today, we're going to be reviewing something that uh, quite fits in with the current season right now. Or, well, not quite actual season, but the beer season. Today we're going to be reviewing Festa Beer by Rubens Brews. Let's give her a little taste. Once again, welcome to the next episode of Drewski's Brewski's. My name is Andrew. In case you haven't seen it before, this is a channel all about craft beer. And if you haven't figured that out, I might be a little concerned for your well-being. Anyways, let me stop being rude to my viewers. <laughs> so, today, what's like I said in the intro, um, we're going to be reviewing a beer that fits in with the season, although not technically the actual season, because it is still technically summer right now, um, but the beer season, so to speak. Um, and if you are in the craft beer world, or even the beer world at all, you might know exactly what I'm talking about already, and that beer season is Oktoberfest, okay? Um, so Oktoberfest is a, uh, it's basically a big tradition that got started in Germany, um, many, many, many years ago. I think it was like 18, late, like the late 1800s or something, or a very long time, let's put it that way. I'll leave the actual year um, on the screen right now or something. Um, but basically it was to celebrate a, a certain king, if I'm not mistaken. Actually, let me look it up because I don't want to sound like a fool. Uh, thank goodness for technology, right? Um, Oktoberfest history. All right, let's see. Uh, yeah, Munich's Oktoberfest uh, traditionally started the third weekend in September. So actually, uh, Oktoberfest I think starts this weekend um, and ends at the first Sunday of October. So it actually began with the royal wedding on the 12th of October, 1810, so early 1800s. Crown Prince Ludwig, later to become King Ludwig I, was married to Princess Therese of Saxony Hildesburgerhausen. Uh, Hildesburgerhausen, I'm sorry. I just had burgers, I'm thinking about burgers. Um, on the 12th of October, 1810. So basically, it was to celebrate the marriage of the of Munich's then prince, who became king, married to the princess and then queen. Um, so it began, like I said, 1810. Um, and uh, yeah, so not quite um, the start of Oktoberfest. I think it actually starts this weekend. But nonetheless, it's close enough. Um, and in case you haven't noticed, your boy got a fresh cut. I know I'm looking pretty good, I know you can't help but stare, and uh, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> let me stop uh, flattering myself. Um, so actually, funny story, I was like, thinking about doing a uh, stout for today. Um, and the reason for that was because there was a couple of days, um, not too long ago, within a couple of days ago, that was actually really cool outside. It was like low 70s, you know, low to mid 70s, and at night it was like 60s and I was so so cool I was like oh man fall is finally starting to show its its uh, its entrance but yeah no it's like in the 80s again today and yeah I'm really glad that I didn't do that stout because it is most definitely not stout weather today um, but anyways let's get on to talking about and cracking open this brew shall we okay so once again this is fest beer it is a lager and it is by Rubens Brews, and um, I forget exactly, oh, they are in Seattle, Washington. Uh, so this is uh, quite, well, pretty much all the way across the United States from where I am. Um, it is 5.8% alcohol by volume. It does come in a one pint can. And on the front of it, it says a Bavarian inspired lager in the tradition of Oktoberfest. So like I said, it does have the um, Oktoberfest um, sort of um, idea behind it. Now, typically, Oktoberfest beers are not lagers. Well, I mean, the typical Oktoberfest beer is technically a Marzen. I think that's how it's pronounced. Marzen. Marzen. Once again, I'm not an expert. Um, but yeah, so if they're typically Marzens, um, but this one is a lager. Um, now, there also is also, there's also an also. I don't know why I just repeated that word. But uh, there's also Kolsch, which is a German sort of style, I believe. 
Um, and loggers can be German, German loggers, you know, like, uh, yeah, German loggers, German pilsners, stuff like that. Beer is very big in Germany. I'd love to go. Um, especially for Oktoberfest. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so this is Fest Beer Lager from Rubens Brews. And, um, I do like, quite like the design of it. It's quite the interesting label. Um, it's simplistic, yet, um, very festive, I suppose. Kind of reminds me of a jester. I don't know why, but it does. And it has a shiny gold little rainbow looking thing on it. But anyways, let's crack her open and see what this Festia is all about. All right, oh, a little fizzy. That's all right. Once again, no schmelly schmell until we pour it in the glassy glass. And uh, hopefully we will not spill. Hey, I'm getting better now. Uh, first couple of times I actually spilled a little bit on myself. So yeah, here we are. Festbia. Um, Color-wise, nice golden color. It's pretty typical of most lagers. Uh, typical lager color, you know, if you think of anything kind of standard lager, you know, Miller Lite, Bud Light, Miller High Life, PBR, anything like that. Anything kind of lagery, which all of those I believe are lagers. Um, you know, I think actually Miller Lite's a Pilsner. Anyways, we're not getting into technicalities here. If you know what a lager is, um, you've had a few in your life in glasses, you know what the color is. It's very standard color for lagers. Uh, you can see pretty much straight through it. There's no haziness to it at all, um, which most lagers don't. Um, most lagers are fairly light in color. But like I said, it does have that nice golden tinge to it. Plenty of bubbles coming up, so it might have slight carbonation to it. Um, but yeah, let's sniff. Sorry, you're going to have to excuse me. My allergies have been acting up the last couple of days. It does have a very typical lager slash Oktoberfest smell. Um, I don't really know how to describe it, um, but it is very lager, lager centric, lager is, I don't, I don't know what word I want to use to describe it, but um, kind of grainy maybe, I don't know, I, I, I don't really know the word to describe the way it smells, but um, it does smell like most Oktoberfest beers slash lager smell, um, so. If that gives you any idea, that's what it smells like. Uh, but anyways, let's take a sip and uh, cool off on this quite hot day. Mm. That has a, a certain sweetness to it. Um, it is much sweeter than a lot of lagers I've had. Um, that might be like kind of the Oktoberfest inspired flavoring because I know some Oktoberfests do have a little bit of a sweetness to them. Um, it does have a very um, like Oktoberfest beer type taste because generally most Oktoberfest, well, Marzins, um, taste pretty similar. Um, now I have had some bad Marzins, but that's, once again, that's not what we're here to talk about. Um, but yeah, it does have a very sort of standard Oktoberfest beer slash Oktoberfest lager, you know, German style. Oh, there we go. That's, that's what I'm going to say. A, a very German style beer taste. Um, and it's definitely not a bad thing. I do like a lot of German lagers. I don't know if that's my German root shining through or what, but um, I do like the way German lagers and Pilsners and Oktoberfest beers taste. Uh, so I do quite enjoy this one as well. Once again, I don't really know the proper words to describe what I'm tasting, which is probably bad for review purposes, and I do apologize for that. Um, but it does have a very standard Oktoberfest beer taste, but it has a little bit more sweetness, um, which is not in a bad way at all. Um, it just uh, it's a tad bit more sweet than I was almost expecting. But once again, not in a bad way. It does, um, it goes well. Um, I don't know if that's maybe, um, the, like I said, maybe the Oktoberfest kind of style shining through a bit, but um, yeah, 
that's not bad at all. Um, definitely better to be served cold, which actually this is cold. Don't be confused there. This is cold. Um, but yeah, this is not something you'd really want to drink warm, which is generally um, beers this light. You generally do want to drink warm. Um, same thing with like any lager or pilsner, really. Um, yeah, you definitely want to drink cold, um, which once again, it is cold. Um, but yeah, it's nice and light. Um, uh, I can see myself drinking a few of these. Um, yeah, very standard lager, Oktoberfest, Pilsner. <laughs> I used to see a lot of words there, but it is a lager. Uh, but it's a very standard Oktoberfest kind of style. Um, so yeah, I do quite enjoy that. Um, Fest beer from Rubens Brews, yeah, out of Seattle, Washington. Um, I guess I should tell you what I what, what my final my final rating is, huh? Well, let's get on to that, shall we? All right. Now, before we get dive too deep into the rating, I do want to say that I am going to change my rating system just a bit, and I'm going to explain briefly why. I'm not going to get too deep into it because um, I don't want to drag this video on any longer than it has to be. <coughs> Whoa. There must be some carbonation in there. Anyways, um, so yeah, I'm gonna change my rating system not out of five anymore, I'm gonna be out of 10. And I'm gonna explain why. This was actually brought you know, into my mind by my two brother-in-laws. We were all having a couple brews one night and uh, they, they both watch my videos and if you are watching, hello there, both Nicks. Um, and they brought up a very valid, good point and that is one to five is kind of a small rating scale. Um, it doesn't really allow you for much fluctuation because yeah. I'm gonna put it to you this way. Okay, I, one of my favorite go-to beers is High Life. Um, like you know, standard cheap beers is High Life. Would I rate High Life a one? No, I wouldn't rate High Life a one. But would I rate it a five? No. And three is not. Long story short. A scale from 1 to 5 can't really justify an accurate rating when it comes to the wild spectrum of beers that there is. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, well, I would rate High Life a 5 out of 10, for example. It's not a 5 out of 5, but it's definitely not a 1 out of 5. So, I'm changing my rating scale over to out of 10 hop leaves. Um, so, out of 10 hop leaves, what would I give this? Um, um, I'm going to give it a solid 6.5. Six and a half out of ten. Reason for that is, once again, it is good. Don't get me wrong, it's good. But it's just, I don't know, it's just not anything super special. It's definitely a very solid lager, Oktoberfest inspired beer. Um, but it's, I don't know, it doesn't really have any special features to me. Um, Oktoberfest is not something I find myself drinking a lot. And I don't know if that's because it's not always Oktoberfest, and maybe Oktoberfest beers aren't always in season, so to speak. Um, but yeah, I mean, October, I, I like Oktoberfest style beers, you know, lagers, marzins, that kind of stuff. Um, but, I don't know, it's got a nice flavor, it's not like bitter or anything like that. It has a very pleasant sweetness to it, which is kind of why I'm rating it a bit higher than, you know, average. Um, but once again, nothing super special, but definitely worth drinking if you are a fan of lagers slash Oktoberfest style beers um, and you do have it available in your area to buy. I had to actually order this one. Um, I use a certain app um, by the name of Tavor. Um, if you don't know what that is, you should definitely check it out. It's a very awesome app that you can use to uh, order beer. I'm not sponsored by them. But uh, if you're looking for someone to sponsor, I'll do it. I've ordered a lot. I've spent a lot of money with you, and I've only had you for about a month. But anyways, um, yeah. So 6.5 out of 10 for Fest Beer Lager from Rubens Brews in Seattle, Washington. Thank you all very much for watching. Let me know what you're drinking on tonight. Um, don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and share. Uh, hit the bell next to the subscribe button for notifications to whenever I crack open a new brew. Um, enjoy yourself, enjoy your week. Tomorrow's Wednesday, it's hump day, or at least it is for me. Um, cheers!